That's what it is. Anything else you want to say to the fans? Uh, I just want everybody to tune in Saturday night. We put on a great show and a great performance, regardless of who I fight. And, um, you know, shout out to Dante's Boxing Nation, man. They're my people, man. They're good people. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? Well, I want to say congratulations to the heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay Wilder, PBC, and Al Heyman for putting together another very successful fight card on PBC. It was just recently reported, matter of fact, I got a phone call from a very close source that the numbers actually peaked around 2 million or a little bit over 2 million and average at 1.8 million. Those are really, really good numbers when it comes to people tuning in to watch Deontay Wilder go up against a massive underdog, Chris Ariola. That's what makes those numbers so impressive because if you really think about it, if you listen to the comments before this fight took place, People saying, oh, you know, Ariola doesn't deserve a shot at the title. I mean, even Deontay Wilder and Ariola themselves, they both said, Ariola, he doesn't deserve the title. The fact that there's a guy in there who doesn't even deserve a title shot and he's a massive underdog and two million people damn near still tune in to watch the fight. That means Deontay Wilder is a big damn deal. And that means, once again, PBC is very successful. You have to think about this, guys. Now, if Ariola didn't deserve to be in that ring and fight Wilder last weekend, just imagine if the guy who actually really did deserve to be in the ring, but he couldn't pass his drug test, which was Alexander Povekin. Now imagine if he was facing the champion, Deontay Wilder, that night. If Deontay Wilder can draw about 2 million fans in to watch him fight, can you imagine how many fans would have tuned in to watch Wilder versus Klitschko, Fury, Joshua, Pavekin, Luis Ortiz, and the list goes on and on and on. Andy Ruiz. Can you guys imagine how impressive those numbers would have been? So these are really good numbers. These are really, really good numbers. And you know, I noticed uh, when I did my report of the Thurman versus Porter numbers, which were really good numbers as well. I, I believe they were around 2 million as well. I think it was like 2.2 million. But when I reported those numbers, there's always a couple people in the comment section. And, and I want people to understand, when I say people and fans in the comment section, you have to understand what people say in the comment section is a reflection to what other boxing writers write, other commentators may say. It's not just the comment section, you know, that's just one place where that person or that those fans will pretty much echo the same thing they heard other fans say, okay? But anyway, there was like a one or two fans that were saying, oh, well, yeah, 2.4 million or 2.2 million, those are not good numbers because uh, Guerrero versus Thurman numbers was like three point this and, and four point that. That's what they were saying, right? That was their argument. So what these fans basically try to do and we really know what time it is because, of course, Al Heyman is on a coincidental list. But what they're really trying to do to discredit Al Heyman in the PBC series is they're trying to compare PBC numbers to PBC numbers, which is ridiculous when you really think about it, right? That's like, say, for example, if I beat someone's ass, right? Let's say I knocked his ass out with one punch. And then I have to fight this dude again. But the second time, it takes me about six or seven punches to knock him out. 
right? And the dude that I just knocked out, he says to me the next day, or maybe he sends me a tweet and say, yeah, man, you know that shit was weak what you did to me because the first time you knocked me out way quicker. It took your ass longer to knock me out the second time. I mean, this is the ridiculous type of ideology that these decafs are basically using. In other words, that person's ass that I just beat, he's not comparing me to him. He can't do that because if he were to compare me to him, then I would look the superior person, right? I would seem to be the superior person over him. So what he does is since he knows he can't compare himself to me, he's gonna compare me to me, right? Once again, if Usain Bolt, you know, who we know is the fastest man on the planet, right? If he finishes at, let's just say hypothetically, 9.6 seconds, you know, in 100 meters, but the next time he does 9.8 seconds, but he still finishes first, are you gonna really say, oh, you know, this wasn't really impressive because the first time he won, he won by 9.6 seconds. This is actually a slower win than his last race. These are the type of ridiculous comparisons that these decafs, dumb casual ass fans, try to make. You're gonna try to compare PBC to PBC. But if you guys notice, they only do that when someone involved is on the coincidental list. You notice that? So for example, they'll make a they'll they'll make a comparison and they'll say, you know, these uh Wilder numbers are good numbers, but they're not as good as Thurman versus Guerrero numbers, which is another PBC card. Now you notice when it comes to HBO, they don't do this. These fans in the comment section and everywhere else, writers they never compare HBO numbers to HBO numbers. You guys notice that? When when Salito Vargas uh, or when when Orlando Salito fought against Francisco Vargas and those numbers was like 600,000, 600, 700,000. They didn't say, "Well, you know, these numbers were decent numbers, but you know, these were nothing compared to uh Kovalev versus Chilemba, right? Or those Chilemba Kovalev numbers, those were decent numbers, but they fell short compared to Canelo versus Kirkland that did two point something million views. You see what I'm saying? They never compare HBO to HBO, but they will compare PBC to PBC. Let me tell you guys something. I don't care how you get the people to tune in. Whenever you have damn near 2 million boxing fans tuning in to watch a fight, that is impressive. Especially when the underdog, or maybe I should say the challenger, is a massive underdog. Because once again, that means people mainly tuned in to watch Deontay Wilder. And don't get me wrong, you had some people who really did believe Maybe Ariola, because we know this is boxing. You know, you're talking about heavyweights with 10 ounce gloves. Anybody can, you know, be knocked out with one punch. So you're tuning in for a couple different reasons. You're tuning in because you like Wilder. You're tuning in because you hate Wilder and you're hoping he gets knocked out. You're tuning in because maybe you believe that Wilder is this overhyped, overrated fighter and it won't take anyone special to beat him, so maybe Ariola will land a lucky shot. You know, these are, once again, really impressive numbers, considering who Wilder was going up against, right? For example, if Gennady Golovkin is fighting Willie Monroe on TV, and versus him possibly fighting Canelo on HBO or him possibly fighting Andre Ward, James DeGale, right? 
him fighting Edeslani Lara, all of those names would help Golovkin generate better numbers on TV, better, better TV views, better pay-per-view buys, whatever the case may be, right? So, you know, you guys have to decipher the codes. You know, a lot of this shit, you know, that they they throw at us are, are basically just dog whistles. We really know what time it is. When they sit over here and they say, oh yeah, you know, try to convince us that two million people tuning in to watch a boxing match, they're not good numbers because, oh, PBC did better numbers in their last card. That logic makes no sense. Once again, if that's the case, then HBO has been extremely unsuccessful for over a year since Canelo fought against Kirkland on HBO because that's the last time HBO generated over 2 million views on HBO, right? But once again, just I, I want to reiterate, you're not going to hear anyone say, oh, those, oh, you know, oh, that 1.4 million or oh, that 1.2 million that Golovkin did against uh, Wade, those numbers are shit because Look what Golovkin versus, look what Canelo versus Kirkland did. It's called a double standard. So, you know, the bottom line is I'm, I'm happy that PBC is successful. I want HBO. I want Top Rank. I want Golden Boy. I want all of these guys to be successful for the good, of, for the betterment of the sport, right? Because at the end of the day, I want the sport of boxing to grow. So I'm not going to be divisive. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, hope that Oscar De La Hoya's or top ranks numbers, you know, just do horrible. I want all of them to succeed. And that's how all you guys should be. You shouldn't be sitting over here because you're so worried about a person's race instead of the sport that you say you love. You should really be sitting over here saying, I want these guys to succeed. I want PBC to succeed. I want big fights like Wilder versus Tyson Fury to be on NBC, on Fox, ESPN, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You should want that if you are a real boxing fan. But a lot of these fans aren't real boxing fans. A lot of them are decafs dumb casual ass fans and those are complete different type of fans so you know I'm really um, elated about this uh, news I really like the fact that Wilder he can draw these kind of numbers against someone like Chris Ariola. Uh, I mean just think about it Thurman versus Porter did over 2 million views can you guys imagine Thurman versus Garcia I mean, imagine that. Imagine Thurman versus Garcia at the Barclays Center, right? Imagine Broner versus Danny Garcia. There are so many fights to be made, and we already know that if Porter Thurman can be successful, we know what other fights can be even more successful. So... That's pretty much all I got for now. I'm on to the next one. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Bob.